some days of pain and victory. I'm Josh and today we are working on Fordnan. So on the last time you saw Fordnan, we were narrowing up this flatbed so it would uh, fit on single rear wheel and got it all fabbed up. Looks pretty good, I think. And today we're gonna build the rear bumper balance thing. Um, I've got some scrap angle iron We've got this piece of plate here that uh, came out of the center section. Um, so with that, we should be able to build a nice little bumper balancing. So it took a lot longer than I expected to pull that rear bumper. Like there was only six bolts and every dang one of them was rusted solid. It was a nightmare. And then also off camera, I got the mounts all figured out so just a little two inch spacer little strap and bolt to the side there uh, so and one more thing we're gonna do we're gonna fix up these uh we're cracked out right there so i've got this piece of 3 16 so on each side we're gonna have to do that first um, because that's where the angle iron is gonna attach so let's get these corners cut out and uh, start fabbing. One side done, doesn't look too bad. Uh, got it a little bit too narrow there, so that kind of sucks. Those aren't even, but it's all good. At least that big old crack's filled up. So I'll bust out the other side and then we'll start uh, fabbing this rear bumper thing. Now we've got some decisions to make. After hanging this down, kind of think it might look good to like do a pretty, you know, intense angle instead of just dropping down here. If I go like a 45, that does give me more room for my tail lights. If I go steep, like the frame rails are there. I'll draw it on there with the 45 and I'll draw it on there, go into the frame rail and see which one I like better. Kind of like the long one better, which is gonna make the taillights tricky because this back piece here is channel. And so drilling through it's gonna kind of suck, but I think I can figure it out. Maybe I can go with some like small enough round ones that'll fit in side the channel and just put them up high. I don't know. But we're gonna go with the long angle because I do think it looks better than the 45. We 
got my uh, sliding T-bevel. And uh, we're gonna measure this angle here. So this doesn't have like measurements on it. So I'll show you how I figured this out. Basically, I'm going to draw that angle on a straight edge. Then I take my speed square and I measure the acute side. And it is 61. So I'm gonna take that measurement, the measurement of the, that angle, so 61 degrees, take the difference between that and 45, because a 45 um, is a 22 and a half on a miter. Since this one was, yeah, more acute than a 45, um, we need to subtract half that difference from a 22 and a half. So instead of 22 and a half, we're gonna subtract eight off of that. So it would be what, 14 and a half degrees. Should be our miter. I know that's super confusing. I was a carpenter and that is how I would figure them out. So run through it one more time. So we're, we're figuring out the miter for this right here, okay? And, but I can't measure that with the speed square. So I measured this, it was 61. If it was 45, then I know that this angle, this might be 22 and a half, but since it's more acute, it's 61, I gotta take half the difference off of each miter. It's 16 over, so half of that is eight. So I take eight off of the 22 and a half, you get 14 and a half degrees for each one of those. long enough to go across that whole center section there. So I'm just joining two pieces of metal together and might be frowned upon, but really it's all right. In this application, it is totally fine. So this piece of plate is nice and flat. And then I've got a piece of angle strapped to the back side of it, all clamped. So it should be good and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and weld that up. Um, so then we can get our length and cut that 14 and a half degree miter on the ends. at it on Ford Man. Um, it's been probably 10 days since I touched the truck, but uh, anyway, what we're gonna do now is uh, cut these for braces. We're gonna go right back to this uh, frame rail up here, uh, one for each side. Once those are tacked in there, then we can weld up this frame solid, fill in right there. The metal I had was just a touch short, so we'll just fill that in and uh, then we'll be ready to start the plate process. So let's uh, cut this guy and then we'll try to make a mirror image of it for this side. Always good to be fabbing. I love fabbing stuff. It's pretty fun. All right, just like that. 
Not too bad. So just gotta make one more of those for the other side. Sweet, got the second one made. So I just gotta clamp them up in there. Um, I basically just traced that one, mirror image on this one, and uh, it worked out great. I had to trim a little bit more off this. I must have uh, placed this one out just a little bit further or something, but it's all good. So, all right, moving on. It's looking pretty good. Got it all welded up solid. Got the braces in there. Filled in the end here. That turned out pretty good. So now the next thing, I'm gonna cut this down for length and then uh, just kind of clamp it on there and trace that angle and then uh, weld it on. So moving right along here. on there so a whole lot of welding to do Sweet. I just got a ton of welding to do I held it down a little further than I anticipated I should have just held it down like the thickness of this plate but I think it'll still be all right. I mean, I got about the same reveal all the way around. I didn't want to weld like right on the edge, but yeah, it's all good. Learning as I go, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Maybe, maybe too tall? I don't know. It's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and bust out all this welding and then uh, yeah, we'll just wrap this thing up. All right, well, I'd say it turned out pretty good. Ended up doing a double pass weld up here to kind of fill it in. Um, and then single pass everywhere else. But, uh, pretty happy with it. So, anyway, next time we work on Fortinand, we'll be putting in the tail lights, uh, hooking up the uh, reverse lights, that kind of stuff, fixing up these fuel fillers, and then I think slapping a coat of paint on it. And this project should be uh, all wrapped up. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, we got merch on Teespring. You can shop on Amazon via any of the links down in the description. You can buy that sweet Well Pro welder. That's what I did to do this whole project. Um, I think I've ran about 10 pounds of wire through that thing so far, and it is working great. So, very, very happy with it for a $300 welder. How do you guys like that new intro? Needed updated a little bit, so uh, yeah, put some new clips in there. I think it's pretty great. Also, we've got the underpower tour coming up. Second year, it's gonna be great. We're working on some prizes. Uh, the route we've got picked out is awesome. Um, so that'll be the first weekend in June. 
you're available, we'd love to have you join us with your uh, classic car. I'm bringing the Impala. Uh, I'm not sure what Alex is bringing, um, but we've got, I think about five rigs so far that are for sure, um, but we'd love to grow it, uh, grow it some more. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Wheel it, wreck it, wrench it, repeat. See you next time.